Hello everyone, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be doing a unboxing of the iPega Dual Thorn Wireless Controller. Um, now I've heard a few things about this controller online, um, quite a bit of which hasn't been great, uh, the reviews for it aren't that amazing, um, but I was really curious to get this and see how it stacked up against the GameSir X2, um, which I also have a review of this, and if you've watched that review, wrong way around, if you've watched that review, um, you might understand why I kind of want to try out a much, much cheaper controller like the iPega. Um, for comparison, the GameStar costs about $80, uh, whereas the uh, Dual Thorn here uh, costs about, uh, well, £25, so about uh, $17, $18. So I think it's a pretty uh, interesting contrast. This is also my first unboxing video, um, so I'm kind of excited to do it. I wish it was uh, a bit more of an exciting device uh, to unbox, um, but I did already open up and play with my Razer Kishi because um, I was too excited. So this one, uh, this is a test run for reviews, um, and we'll uh, oh sorry for unboxings, and we'll see how it goes. So got my utility knife here. Uh, I think that's about it. Put this up. So um, I should also say I'm actually going into this totally blind. I really don't know anything about this controller except for a couple of the reviews I read. Um, it's wireless, which I don't really like, but um, it just seemed kind of interesting. Um, I guess it's marketed for PUBG. Actually, if I'm right, um, well, let me just actually look at this really quick. Uh, special design for PUBG mobile. Oh, I thought it was like a special edition, but it's not. They just kind of designed it for PUBG. Um, now, uh, disclaimer, I know nothing about modern, uh, or very little about modern games, especially modern shooting games. So anyway, get rid of this. And so here we have the iPega in the box. Now, just visual first impressions, this actually looks really, really nice. Um, I'm actually surprised I expected it to just look a lot cheaper than it does. Um, so what, well, I really want to push some buttons, but I'm not going to yet. So in the box, we have the um, instruction manual. It is uh, in English, which is nice. Um, pretty, pretty simple stuff, really. Although it does have quite a lot of uh, information here. Um, seems to be a lot of focus on PUBG. Um, you can tell what they're going for. Uh, I am not going to be playing PUBG with this. I know very little about PUBG. Um, the only thing I do know about it uh, is that once when I was in Estonia, I was in my uh, Airbnb. Uh, in the middle of Tallinn, Old Town, and I was really, really, really bored. Uh, I was there for a business trip. So I downloaded PUBG, I played one match, I won the match, and then I just figured that was a great place to retire from PUBG. Anyway, let's take a look in this little box here. Alright, we got an accessory here. Let's empty this box for us. So, USB-C cable. And... This right here, now uh, this is, I think, the uh, edge of the controller if you don't want to use the other side. It's kind of like a Joy-Con um, from the Nintendo Switch. So you can actually take this side off um, and plug this in. Uh, and if you just want to use like the right-hand side for uh, touchscreen, which is pretty popular, I assume, with, uh, with first-person shooters and shooter games on mobile because uh, these aren't always great um, compared to... Uh, using the touchscreen. Now that's debatable. I think it's more like um, it's a bit more accurate and you can react quicker using a touchscreen, but whether that's a better control I'm very doubtful of. Anyway, uh, then we have this, and this is great. This is a um, headphone uh, extender, and one of the problems with the game through and the Kishi is you can't plug in headphones while you play, so I'm pretty excited to see this in the box. All right, so that's uh, everything that's in the box, so let's go ahead and take the iPega out here. Sorry if this squeaks. Wow, it's really... This thing is really in there. So taps... Oh, there we go. There we go. Maybe it's a good thing this is my first unboxing. Alright, let's put these over here. Alright, so here it is. First impressions in the hand. Um, it is very uh, plastic, <laughs> very, very plasticky. Um, and things, especially like this ridge, doesn't 
quite line up. It doesn't seem to fit all that well. Um, but that's okay, it's a cheap controller. So let's take a look at it. All right. So I guess this is the release button for the Joy-Con. So as you can see on this side, uh, it's actually attached. So you can't take this off. Um, this thing is already picking up fingerprints, by the way. That's crazy. Um, it's definitely cheap plastic, definitely. Uh, anyway, on the other side, you have this locking mechanism. I'm not going to look at this right now. We'll take a look back at the front. Um, so you've got your dual analogs, um, your D-pad, and your face buttons. The D-pad, as you can see, is um, a, uh, what do you call it? It's not a single button It's uh, or a single uh, piece of plastic. They're individual buttons. Uh, and then you have your turbo and a home button. Surprised it has turbo, actually. That's kind of old school. And then you start and select. Um, but yeah, in the hands, I actually really like how this feels. Uh, I've, you know, pretty much all of the mobile controls, the, the game server is, is just, you know, I mean, it, it has a better ergonomic, but it still feels cheap. This feels a bit cheaper, but I don't really mind because it's almost a quarter of the price of the game server. So let's take a look at these sticks now. These are familiar. This is, uh, these are Nintendo Switch Lite style analog sticks. Um, and wow, yeah, these are actually really nice. Oh my goodness. Actually, um, I need to go in right away um, because these are really light. Um, they have like almost no resistance. These are something more akin to the Razer Kishi. They're actually really heavy to move, uh, and I personally really like that. Yeah, this is this is really nice feeling stick. But right there, Let's see if I can get that. There's some kind of click in there, so I'm a little, I don't know, I'm a little nervous about that, but um, anyway, we'll see. Um, these also click for L3 and R3. It's a really loud click though. I, I've never heard a analog stick click that loudly in my life. Um, let me give you a comparison real quick to an 8-bit dough. Yeah, so this, this does click loudly. But this is just really sharp. That's a really loud click. Uh, but anyway, let's move on. Let's check out these face buttons. All right, so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, this D-pad is just terrible. Oh my goodness, it's awful. So the whole D-pad moves. So it is actually a single unit uh, or a single piece of plastic under here. The, the cutout is huge compared to the D-pad. So it moves around a lot, but it actually pushes down flush with the case, which just is not a nice feeling um, at all. Um, yeah, that, it's not great. It's not great. Let's just go with that. Your uh, turbo button, yeah, that's very nice. Just a soft press button. Uh, and again, like the, I, I guess actually the home button is also it's very uh, soft and mushy. And it's recessed completely flat. Completely flat, which I think is a great idea. Because you're not going to want to press the home button by accident. All right. So um, now let's look at the other side. So the face buttons. Yeah, these, these are nice. Um, these are really nice. There's, there's a little bit too much play if you look in the, in the case here. There's a little bit too much play um, in how the uh, buttons are in the case. They're a little bit loose and you can kind of feel them move under your finger. Um, but they're a nice soft touch button. Uh, really reminiscent of an Xbox controller actually. If these buttons were a little tighter in the case and they didn't wobble left and right like this, I would like them a lot more, but overall, like, these are nice. Uh, let me give you another comparison. A fairer comparison, I guess. The game, sir. So these are really nice and tight in the case. They barely move. And they're kind of clicky, whereas these are really soft. I personally prefer this kind of soft touch. Um, but anyway, and start and select uh, are the same thing. Uh, actually... Oh, that's, that's kind of strange. Uh, am I imagining this? Hold on. Let me... Yeah, so the select button... The start button actually... Uh, let me see a good angle for this. The start button is actually, is actually a little bit further out than the select button. So the select button pushes almost completely flat. And the start button uh, sticks up. A bit more and doesn't go flush with the case. It's kind of kind of strange, but hey, gotta remind myself this is cheap. All right, so now we need to look at these shoulder buttons here. So I'm going to do the legendary plastic pull. These are very shiny. 
very satisfying to pull off. Okay, so I need to do this before I move on. I'm sorry, I need to. Uh, the game server has some of the worst shoulder buttons I've ever had the displeasure of using. There's no travel. They're super hyper clicky. Um, they're just terrible. I hate them. So I'm really curious as to how the IPEG is going to handle that. Uh, is going to stack up here. Um, so there's more travel um, on the triggers here. As you can see, they actually move. Um, but it's a very cheap sounding click. I mean, it's actually hollow, right? So you, what you're actually hearing is the the resonance of the click in the, the cheap hollow plastic case. Um, it's not terrible on the L2 and R2. Um, yeah, it is terrible, but again, like, I have to keep saying this is, this is pretty cheap. All right, let's check out these. Uh, the L1 and R1 are certainly worse um, than the L2 and R2. I, I just, I'm not a fan of these really loud clicky buttons. Um, let me do another comparison here with the games, with the game server. Yeah, the iPeg is much louder, but the thing is, is it's much uh, of a, it's a much uh, lower pitched sound. Hmm, okay. Um, these are both terrible <laughs> shoulder buttons. Both terrible. I think that the uh, iPega has better L2 and R2, definitely. But the Gamester uh, miraculously has better R1 and uh, L1. But they're both terrible. Um, Yeah, that, that kind of hollow kind of rattle as you press the button is really not desirable. Uh, but anyway, is it uh, a quarter of the quality of the game, sir? No way. Um, so let's take a look here. Uh, how do I open this? Do I just pull it? Okay, cool. So this is interesting. Um, whereas the game, sir, has a kind of like a two-half design like this, the iPega is actually pulling out from the middle. As you can see, there's actually a middle section. I don't really, I mean, the mechanism is really tacky. It's really stiff. You can see all the movement here um, and really uneven. Uh, I'm, hold on, I actually, I actually got stuck just now. <laughs> yeah, so this isn't great. Um, oh my goodness, uh, this feels like it will break in approximately five seconds. It's really not good. Um, really, really cheap stuff. Anyway, um, on the inside here, we do have uh, some rubber to hold the phone. Uh, that's fine. And a little slot in here. Now, is this for? No, what is that for? Mm, I'm not sure, okay. Well, let's, let's, let's take off the Joy-Con here, for lack of a better word. Okay, so it connects with a USB-C connection. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's, it's, it's just lots of that there's really nothing to, to talk about here. It just comes off like it should. Uh, let's put the other side on. Ah, oh, this actually has an R2 as well. How interesting. Let me uh, put the stuff up here real quick. So this has an R2. This is uh, really, really clicky, actually. This is much more like the game throws R2. This is just a piece of plastic pushing against a piece of plastic, which is the tactile switch. Um, really, would it would it really hurt these people to just put some rubber membrane on these buttons? Just the RGB10 has a little two millimeter round piece of rubber that goes in the button so it doesn't click on the switch so loud. Really, it's not hard. Um, anyway. All right, that's besides the point. So this is what it looks like without the other Joy-Con. So basically you would have your phone here um, using the controller on this side for movement and all this stuff. Oh, that was a nasty D-pad. And then you'd shoot using the R2. This is a really cool design though. Like if this was priced up a bit and was really premium, uh, it would be really cool. It's a shame it's so cheap, but it's also not a shame it's so cheap because it's so cheap, right? Uh, what is this? I'm still trying to figure out this gap. 
Do you see that? There's a gap here. I'm not really sure what it's about. Anyway, I guess what we should do now is uh, give this a go. So I'm going to plug this in here. All right, let's get a phone in here and try it out. So I've got my trusty Poco F1. Um, now, I wonder, is this going to fit with the case on? Let's see. Yeah, it does, actually. That's really cool. Um, I, I'm always a huge fan of when these work with a case. Um, you know, I think you're supposed to take it out of the case and kind of get it in, in on the rubber really securely, but you really don't need it. I mean, these things are super secure just because, you know, physics exist. Um, all right, let's take a look here. So how do I turn this thing on? Maybe start button. There's a couple of LEDs up here. Maybe the home button. Here we go, home button. All right, so we're searching. I'm going to turn on our Bluetooth here. EG9176, that's the model for this. Actually, let me, uh, I'm probably going to need to turn the brightness down here for a second. Just so you can see it a bit better. There we go. All right, so this is now connected. Uh, oh, okay, the mapping is all over the place with that D-pad. Wow, why is it lagging so much? Okay, I'm going to actually get into uh, something I'm actually going to play. Let's do Pocket Rally. I'm going to go into a single... Oh, actually, uh, oh, the mapping is just all over the place. Down on the analog stick seems to be um, registering as back. All right, here we go. So we're going to steer left, steer right, accelerate, brake, camera... Huh, okay. This Y button isn't working at all. Alright, X I guess for that. Um, start and select are also not working. Huh, okay. Well that's interesting, isn't it? I'm uh, losing confidence in this controller very, very quickly. <laughs> what? What exactly is happening here? I just set these controls up. What on earth? Let's be honest though, um, I mean, if we were uh, a normal user who didn't want to tinker with stuff and just wanted a controller, this is not doing well so far. Now I did have the instructions around here somewhere, so we're going to actually take a look at those. Here we go. Alright, I'm just going to read these really quick. Anyway, that's, uh, I'm going to take another quick look through the manual while we download Shooting Plus V3, which is the official app, somehow. So, um, I, I guess while this is going, I'll just give you some impressions. Um, I mean, this is definitely cheap, right? Um, I'm actually really surprised because I think when I do really consider it, it does feel substantially cheaper than the GameStar X2. Um, so let's move this up here. Now the GameStar X2 is a controller I do really like. I do like the controller. I really do. But this is way too cheap for the price. Like it's, it's made badly for the cost of the device in my opinion. This on the other hand is pretty cheap. It's $25, but even that feels a bit too expensive given... No, actually, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I would say I wouldn't expect this level of compatibility issue right off the bat with a device at $25. Anyway, that upgrade has failed, so I'm just going to probably cut this entire segment out of the video anyway. Take another look at the instructions. Um, <laughs> this is a crazy first unboxing, really. I really didn't expect... Oh! Uh, 
<laughs> okay. All right. For the sake of fairness, we are going to go ahead and do this again. I've just gone through a substantial amount of time trying to get this to work. Because in the instruction manual, there is a bunch of different modes. I had seen the Android Direct Play mode, and I was using that, and it didn't work. Um, then I read further into the manual on a different page, and it talked about uh, Android Standard Game Mode. So I finally managed to put it into Standard Game Mode, and it appears that it's working. So we are going to go in, and you know what? I'm actually going to go right in um, and play a game on RetroArch. All right, so after nearly 40 minutes, we're actually going to go ahead and start playing here, but we're not because the D-pad isn't working. Okay, there's some substantial input lag. Like, absolutely substantial. Maybe a second? A full second of input lag, perhaps. All right, um, let's go back again. Let's go back into Pocket Rally. Okay, so it looks like all the buttons are working as they should. Um, but unfortunately, there is about a full second of input lag here. Um, which in a game where you need kind of precise controls like this... I, I, guess, I guess if you want to get used to like basically running ahead by like a second in your head just to use this controller, uh, that's fine. Yeah, but this this is not great. It's not a very good uh, feeling. The the L two and R two are, are are just they're okay, um, but they're really loud. Just like you know, kind of like the games are a little bit less high pitched. Um, but you know, you can see me trying to turn here. Like, do you see how long that took? And how long that took? It's really not playable. Um, and I didn't press whatever button that was that changed the camera. What button did I set for that? Why? Yeah, that's weird. Um, I'm going to boot up one more game because I do really want to get um, a real uh, kind of platformer game and see how that goes. All right, here we go. Finally, we're going to try out a, a, a retro game here. We don't care about this. Battle alone, just like I did in my childhood. Why is that suddenly going back? What? Okay, so here's the thing. I don't know what's going on with the controls here. Um, but this controller is just pure and simple, unusable. Um, unfortunately, th this is a zero out of ten. I, I I quite like the the build. You know, I like how it feels in the hands. Uh, I like the analog sticks a lot. Um, even they have this kind of hollow clickiness at some angle. It's kind of weird. Um, but the input lag is just unreal. Like it's absolutely unbelievable. And I've heard about some devices like this. Like the, the Bluetooth game server is supposed to be the same. Um, but look, I just press one button here. Is this a turbo issue? I don't think so. Um, but either way, like my, my A button has, has completely or B button is now is now working. But the, the I mean the dropped inputs are crazy. Um, it, yeah, so okay, I think I'm ready to wrap this up. This video's gone on for absolutely ages. Um, and unfortunately the IPEGA um, what are we called? The IPEGA uh, PG9167 Dual Thorn Bluetooth Game Controller is quite simply unusable. Um, you can't use it. It doesn't work. Um, which is a shame, because it's kind of an innovative design. I like that you can take this off for some different options. Kind of thoughtfully include a headphone jack. Um, the, the face buttons are really nice to push, you know? I, I do like them. I do like them a lot. Uh, the analog sticks are, are nice. Whatever that clickiness is in here, I'm sure that could be fixed. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, the shoulders are 
pretty terrible. The L2 and R2 are better than the games through the R1 and L1 somehow or not. And they even feel different on both sides. Um, D-pad's, you know, serviceable but pretty bad. And yeah, overall the thing is just super cheap. Um, and if this were to work flawlessly, like as in the connection and the latency, I think I would actually really like this controller. I think it's really cheap, it's really kind of, I don't know, I guess cheap and cheerful you'd say. Um, there's really nothing too bad with the design or the build quality, you know, yeah, it's cheap, but you pay a cheap price, so, you know, I'm not mad about that at all. But the fact that it just doesn't work, you know, like this, this input lag is, is absolutely crazy, and I don't know what is going on with this button. Um, yeah, there's just something majorly wrong here. So in summary, um, I unfortunately have to say that the iPega is unusable. Um, it's not a good controller just because it simply doesn't work. I think that this level of input lag, combined with the difficulty of just getting it working, um, is really, really terrible. And it's a real shame because I don't dislike the actual physical device itself. I think it feels fine in the hands. Um, the L2 and R2 are somewhat better than the Game Sir, which is nice, a bit more movement to them. Um, but the whole thing is kind of hollow. Sticks are good. The face buttons, I really like these. I like how these feel. They're, they've got a nice push to them. The D-pad is really pretty terrible, actually. It, it sits flush so quickly that it almost feels like a slider, like like an analog slider than a, than a D-pad, really. It's very strange. And everything is just too loud. The clicking is just too loud. The buttons are too loud. The only thing I think is really nice is the, the analog sticks themselves and the face buttons. But regardless of all of that, as a game controller, this just simply doesn't work. Um, it takes it took me ages to get it set up, and even though now I've tested it in a couple of different games, it still has this terrible like second or two input lag. It makes playing any game just a chore. Um, and that's just my first impressions of it. So I guess I didn't really expect this to be like a review. I really thought I would just kind of do a simple unboxing and review it later on, but I can already tell you I've seen more than enough of this device to know exactly what I think of it. This is going back in the box. Uh, I'm, I don't know, uh, I don't know what I'll do with it, um, but I would never choose this over the Games or the Kishi. It really highlights the importance of USB-C. If this connected with USB-C, then I think this would be a good controller because you'd eliminate that lag. I think it would be good for the price and it is substantially cheaper than the competition. But the issue is getting it set up the input lag um, just mean that this thing is just useless. It's totally useless, especially in a first-person shooter. Competitive game like PUBG, you're not going to want a second of input lag. Um, it's really terrible. And it feels like the more you use the controller, um, the kind of worse it gets. I mean, like, this is just terrible. It's so terrible. Um, so anyway, okay, that's my unboxing and impromptu review of the iPega Dual Thorn. Um, unfortunately, it's really, really bad. Um, the reviews are true, definitely believe the hype in the reviews, it, this is a terrible controller. Um, I hope they come out with, or I hope there is a USB-C alternative, and I will say this. If they bring out a USB-C version of this controller, or if there is one and I just missed it, I'll happily try it. And I'll happily see if this is a cheap controller with cheap controls and cheap build quality for a cheap price that works pretty well. If that's the case, I would like this. I love cheap things, you know, I wear cheap watches. Um, I love paying less and getting like a slightly lesser quality product product that just works. And it's why I was so interested in the iPega. Um, because compared to the GameStar, which is about four times the price, more or less, um, I thought this is going to be like a good alternative. But because it's Bluetooth and the input lag, it just doesn't work. Um, and you know, sure does make me appreciate the GameStar X2 a bit more. So anyway, that's it for my review and my unboxing. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.